had a dog named Bastion. There he is. And I had him for about 17 years. Amazing, right? He was a rescue pet. And I was a cat person who got a dog because my roommate at the time was allergic to cats. So I had to get a dog. And he, he saved me so many times. This episode is about our rescue pets and how important that getting a pet can be if you're able to get one. Bastion um, was great. Like he, I had him when I was a starving artist all the way into not starving artist land. And he was my great, great companion. And I loved him a lot. Kirsten's Agenda is the name of my show. It's a way to make art and learn stuff and grow. There will be lots of segments and maybe some guests. 10 minutes of deep breath, that is my quest. If while we're here, then our insights expand to be more compassionate to our fellow man and woman and person. And remember, the truth is that kindness is cool. Have sex with my feelings and being cruel. Because our power it lies in our minds and our hearts. Opening up is a really good place to start. Rescue pets. I know you're like, Kirsten, I can't afford to have a pet. I um, live in a place that doesn't allow pets. I am afraid I will not be able to take care of it. Well, animals are a learning curve and, and we all know best whether we can handle it or not for sure. However, pets are great. They improve the quality of your life. They teach you stuff about yourself. They are your spiritual friend in both the loving, wonderful way and also the, oh my gosh, they're driving me crazy. Um, oftentimes we learn about ourselves through our pets. I have learned how to be more assertive from my cats. I have learned how to rest better from my cats. You know, you've got to give them some attention, but also it's kind of a wake up call to give yourself some attention. They're wonderful in general, but right now a lot of people are alone and, you know, when we talk about being a good girlfriend, boyfriend, partner to ourselves, a way you can learn to do that is to connect with another creature. Um, I am not ashamed to say how often I hug my cats and we listen to Luther Vandross together. I have three rescue pets, Gus Gus, Atreyu, and D'Artagnan. Gus Gus was actually being left at a park and I was at the park while Gus Gus was being left. He was very tiny. Here's a picture of him, very tiny. I talked to the woman who was leaving the cat there. She was pretty distressed and um, said she didn't know what to do and they needed to get rid of it because the cat was scratching her daughter and it was really, you know, really little. And I, I wouldn't choose to leave a cat at a park Oh, are you going to be judgy about the woman, Kirsten? Like you haven't done stuff yourself in your life? Like you haven't done bad things before? She was very remorseful. And I could tell that like she had a lot going on in her life. So you know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? Like she had, let's solve the problem. Just give me the cat. So I took the cat home and Gus Gus was a wild beast. And he didn't know how to clean himself. And he didn't know how to use a cat box. And he would scratch up my arms all the time. And then about a year later, he was still really uh, rough around the edges. He's still a little rough, but not as rough. I knew someone who, uh, there, was, there was a situation with these two cats where um, someone was elderly and had a stroke and couldn't take care of them. I thought I would just foster them. And they came to my house and the person who couldn't take care of the cats, he had had a stroke, he then um, left the planet. So then I decided to keep them. And the greatest thing about, I mean, there's all kinds of great things about them. They really helped Gus Gus learn how to be a cat. And they all get along famously. And I love having three cats. It's always like when there's one that's tired, two want to play, it all works out really good. One place that I really like in LA is called Kitty Bungalow Charm School for Wayward Cats and Kittens. Um, but there's all kinds of different organizations, depending upon where you live, that can help you. And they'll step you through how to take care of a cat or a dog. If you're like, I've never done it, They'll help you. Trust me, they know all kinds of things about cats and they can help you do it in a way that helps you feel confident and also not feel like you're breaking the bank to take care of uh, a new pet. We're 
We're about to talk to Sarah Benincasa. I met her on the internet. I don't usually meet people on the social media, but we hit it off amazingly well. And we're both pals with Neil Gaiman and everybody who's pals with Neil Gaiman, he's like the great glue that connects you in goodness. Uh, she has a podcast called Well, This Isn't Normal. It's starting its second season right now. It's a really cool podcast that she started during quarantine. You can find that in all the places. Uh, she's written some amazing books. And if you go to matruska.com and you put in Sarah, S-A-R-A, uh, you can get 20% off of clothes there. I think it's 20%. It's a percentage is my point. And those dresses are amazing. Please meet my friend, Sarah. I wanted to adopt a dog who was an owner surrender because they were el the people were elderly. I can tell them that their animal's in good hands and maybe if it's okay with them, I could bring the dog to visit, blah, blah, blah. You know, this was like my thought. So I thought she was gonna be a dog. And then at the beginning of pandemic, I thought, okay, I have a history of depression and agoraphobia and it's pretty well managed, but I don't know what this is gonna be like. I need a buddy um, to hang out with consistently who is not a human. And so I, decided to foster a cat. And it turned out that her origin story was exactly that. You're a dog person who has a cat. I'm a dog person who has a cat. Did you have a feeling of like, as I had this when I was about to take on ownership of a cat, this thing of like, oh God, I'm not gonna be able to live my life. I'm gonna have to feed them and blah, blah, blah. No, I had this responsibility thing that overtook me. Did yeah. you have any of that um, worry? I thought about it because usually in a, my, I'm from New Jersey. My family lives there still. I'm usually back there. I thought about it and then I thought, well, I don't know how long this pandemic thing is going to last. Right. But a cat, I feel like it'll be easier when I travel to have a cat sitter versus trying to bring my dog with me everywhere or right. getting a dog sitter. And um, so it just made sense sense to me and I 29 hours after I after I got her I texted them and asked if I could keep her which I thought was going to happen why is she the best besides the fact that she has thumbs she has thumbs so she is a polydactyl cat which is also called the Hemingway cat because he was obsessed with them and she's so great because well I guess because I just decided to fall in love and also she's very loving she's very tender like any cat she took some time to Hello, Mama. So we can say with confidence that Polly has improved your quality of life. Oh my gosh, yes. Polly, come here. We can she say with confidence that Polly has mom. made the pandemic experience more pleasurable. Yeah, she's made it way better. And I've learned things from being her person that have helped me with humans. This is a song about uh, Gus Gus. Um, he co-wrote it. Uh, I did the lyrics, or most of them. He took over at the end. He did the melody. Um, it. I wanted. I asked him. I said, "Let's write a song, like to encourage people to get a, a, a pet." And um, this is this is what this is his contribution. I had to write it down. I mean, he's good at he's good at you know rhymes, but the actual you know he's got those little paws. Whatever. Named after a f nope. I gotta go higher. Named after a fat, nope. He, we did it together, so I gotta get that. Named after a fat, named after, there we go. Named after a fat rat in Cinderella. I am a straight cat and a real choice fella. I love eating plastic and mozzarella and melodic ditty sung a cappella. I'm Gus Gus the cat and I pee on a thing. I live with this lady, but I am the king. The remedy to everything my urine stream brings. I'm Gus Gus the cat and I pee on a thing. You say that you're stuck inside with your feelings. Me Gus Gus, I'm gonna bring some healing. How? I'm gonna pee on a thing. Which improves all dealing so much I can solve with my indiscriminate streaming. I'm gonna pee on this. I'm gonna solve a problem. Okay, you got a problem? Like, why do we still have all of the people coming, going out without masks on? Or why haven't, why they moved the date of the census? I really don't like the VP pick. I do, but you don't like, what are you gonna do? I know how to solve it. Here's my answer. Pee on it. Fixed. You're welcome.